21, you're just about to leave the zone in 30 seconds, broadcast 2 by 1500 feet and below, bye now. Tuba, thanks 1500 below and we'll catch you on the return, thanks for the wing one. There's one. Shimok 327, afternoon, Kitland, Amazon 1, the wind is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, One of the privileges of flight is to fly where you want to, when you want to. Well, sort of. When it comes to controlled airspace, we either need to stay clear of it or know how to fly into this airspace. Here's our top secret facility at Morningstar on the N7 as you travel to Cape Town on your left hand side. We're going to take you through the airspace of Cape Town and George and show you the most prominent VFR reporting points. Because most aeronautical maps are outdated, we have plotted the following information using the AIP, AIC and supplements. It is important that you always check the most current information available to you. What we see here is a top-down view of the George airspace, the uh, control zone or CTR, as well as the terminal control area or TMA. But what we are interested in is the CTR. If you want to enter the George CTR from the west, air traffic control will most likely send you to Hartenbos. When you reach Hartenbosch, you need to be at 1,500 feet to stay below the TMA. If you approach George CTR from the east, air traffic control will most likely send you to Island Lake, just to the east of Wilderness. Keep in mind though, there is an active paragliding box here. Before expansion of the George CTR, Great Brack River was the previous reporting point. Now however, if you only make contact with air traffic control at Great Brack River, and they have traffic on the instrument landing system that places you a mere three nautical miles from traffic on the ILS. The same goes for Wilderness. Wilderness used to be the VFR reporting point, approximately eight miles from the airfield. Now however, if you only make contact at Wilderness, you are already about five miles inside George's airspace and on direct conflict with traffic departing from runway 11. Cape Town's airspace is seen from above, including the TMAs and CTR. Again, what we are interested in is the CTR. Cape Town Airport is located centrally inside the CTR. What we need to keep in mind is that Eisterplatz Air Traffic Control Zone, or ATZ, is situated out towards the northwest of Cape Town Airport. The first point of concern in terms of airspace infringements is the area out towards the northeast, which we'll show you later. Out towards the east is the Botleray Hills. One needs to keep in mind that the Stellenbosch airfield is a stone throw away from this reporting point and they operate on their own frequency. Out towards the southeast is Somerset West and Makassar Beach. Out towards the west of the CTR, Kilani Racecourse and the Cooling Towers. The problem comes in when approach control vectors aircraft onto the instrument landing system. Because of mountainous terrain out towards the west, the only downwind really available is out towards the east. It's in close proximity to the Botleray Hills, which means if we miss that reporting point, we are creating a reduction in separation inside controlled airspace. This is my KR2. It's got a fuselage, wings, an engine, and even a propeller. It can fly at 180 miles an hour, climb at 1,500 feet per minute, and has a surface ceiling of 15,000 feet. This KR2, however, is useless at flying and has got the glide ratio of a brick currently. The reason? Because it is in pieces. Now, much like the information that we gather when we do pre flight planning, individually it doesn't mean a lot. 
but combine that information and we give ourselves a fighting chance in controlled airspace. Our pre-flight planning doesn't have to start like this. We have to ask ourselves the question, why is it that we fly into controlled airspace accidentally? One of the main reasons we have airspace infringements is because we don't know where to call and when to call and who to call. Let's go pay the guys in the tower a visit to find out what we should do. Air traffic control has the primary function to keep aircraft and side controlled airspace separated from each other. They are there to make sure that we do not fly into each other. So when we arrived unannounced inside this airspace, it makes the whole situation just a bit more challenging. A reduction in separation might not sound like a problem to us as pilots. It sounds pretty much like an air traffic control problem. The reality is it quickly does become our problem. It becomes our problem because that air traffic controller is relieved from position, the frequency is combined, which more often than not leads to frequency congestion. Let's go fly around inside the George CTR to have a look at the most prominent DFR reporting points in one of IFA's Cessna 172s. As a partner in aviation safety in South Africa, Avic International Flight Training Academy was kind enough to give us one of their Cessna 172s to go and fly around in the George airspace. With us then is their chief flight instructor from Oudswere, Zibi Stechman. The required flight planning was done, flexible use of airspace applications approved and coordination done with George Air Traffic Control. Crossing the Otaniqua Mountains to the west of Robinson Pass, we are remaining below the George TMA en route to Hartenbos. As we arrive over the beautiful town of Hartenbos, we are maintaining 1,500 feet and we are in contact with George Approach requesting an inbound clearance. The George CTR's western boundary starts beyond the river mouth and it is important that you call before this point. Do not enter the airspace unless you have read back your inbound clearance. The next town just as you pass Hartenbos is Kleinbrak River. Do not confuse this point with Hartenbos. Kleinbrak River is already inside George's airspace. Complying with air traffic control instruction, we are remaining seaward side of the coastline, keeping the line feature to our left. Keep a lookout though and maintain a listening watch on frequency. This route is used inbound and outbound and sometimes does become congested. The Groot Prak River used to be the prominent VFR reporting point before entering the George CTR. That was before the changes was made. Today Groot Prak is still used by air traffic control as a reporting point. You are most likely to be transferred from approach control to tower control at this point.
Glentana, a VFR reporting point still being used by George Tower. We're flying seaward side of the coastline because of the deemed separation that George Air Traffic Control needs between us and IFR traffic. Keep in mind though, landing on a beach here is near impossible as some of these areas are extremely rocky. You need to have a plan B then when the donkey dies. Now if you're a keen golfer, the next reporting point should be known to you. It's Herald's Bay, the home of Ernie Els. This VFR reporting point is used specifically by Tower to route traffic to before you join the downwind. Again, maintain a listening watch on frequency. This little piece of airspace can become busy. As we complete our turn and head back into the George CTR, on the nose is the town of Wilderness. Let's stop and rewind a bit. Wilderness was the old VFR reporting point. If you call there now for an inbound clearance, it's too late. You're already inside George airspace. You're on long final for runway 29 and in direct conflict with IFR traffic departing runway 11. What we need to do is call it Island Lake. That's just to the east of Wilderness East. Welcome to the mother city, Cape Town, that city that's got the mountain. What better way then to explore the CTR of Cape Town than in an open air cockpit? Len and Christine Klopper from Cape Recreational Flight Training was kind enough to offer us two of the Magni M16 gyros. Flying in a southerly direction, the Cape Town CTR is now in our 3 o'clock position and we are literally hugging their airspace. Now normally we would not do this but keep in mind that we are skulking, we have communicated with them and they are aware of what our plans are. You need to stay well east of this road prevent flying into the airspace. This specific area is prone to airspace infringements and does cause a lot of reductions for Cape Town air traffic control. Botleray Hills, and more specifically the northern slopes of the Botleray Hills. Prominent VFR reporting point if you want to join the Cape Town circuit. 
Keep in mind though, this is also an exit point for traffic leaving the Cape Town CTR. As we head south again and cross the Botleray Hills, in our 12 o'clock is the Stellenbosch airfield. Now you need to be aware of the fact that there's aircraft flying in this airspace that could be either on Cape Town Towers frequency, Tiba frequency or the Stellenbosch frequency. The southern slopes of the Botleray Hills, not a popular reporting point with air traffic control. This brings you extremely close to the circuit at Stellenbosch airfield. When approaching Cape Town from the southeast, take note that there's a prohibited area right on the corner of their CTR. Look for the town of Somerset West, your next reporting point received from air traffic control will most likely be Makassar Beach. Makassar Beach, the most prominent VFR reporting used by Cape Town Air Traffic Control. Do not venture beyond this point without an inbound clearance. You'll be crossing the final approach path for runway 01 and the departure path for runway 19. In order to keep you separated from instrument flight rule traffic, Air Traffic Control will most likely instruct you to descend to 1000 feet or below, routing seaward side of the coastline. As we head inland again, and our 12 o'clock is Zierkwee flight, Cape Town CTR is now in our 2 to 3 o'clock position. Again, we are maintaining 1,500 feet on Cape Town QNH in order to remain below the TMA. Kenilworth Racecourse on the western boundary of the Cape Town CTR. The CTR is now in your 3 o'clock position. This route is extremely busy with VFR traffic, so make sure that your broadcasts are accurate before you contact Tower. In our 12 o'clock we have what is still known as the cooling towers. This point is predominantly used by traffic routing between Cape Town CTR and the A-Supplied ATZ. You need to make sure you contact Cape Town Tower long before you reach this point. Easterplant Air Force Base, situated within their own ATZ, excludes the Cape Town CTR. If they are unmanned and you're flying within this airspace, you need to obtain an inbound clearance from Cape Town Air Traffic Control, and specifically Cape Town Tower, before entering the Cape Town CTR. Remember, it is in close proximity to the Cape Town CTR.
The freedom of flight is indeed a privilege, and it's a privilege that we need to be responsible with. If we know who to call, when to call, and where to call, by making use of the most prominent VFR reporting points in and around controlled airspace, we not only make our flight more enjoyable, but ultimately much safer.